What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another video in our 30 days for modeling and SketchUp series. So one of the things that can be really valuable for modeling and SketchUp is having the ability to model things that are symmetrical but also go along a curve. So you can use this to create anything from columns to plates to anything like that and we're going to talk about a method to do that in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by importing an image and I can't distribute the images um, so just go search for like wine glass profile or something like that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna import those so you can click on the little hamburger menu right here and click on import from my device on the desktop version you just do a file import and you go find an image and so we're gonna import the image of our profile and so we're gonna start with the wine glass. So we're gonna bring the wine glass in, and in this case, we wanna import this as an image. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna import this, and usually I import this larger, um, because if you uh, do this really small, sometimes SketchUp has trouble dealing with the little segments and the curves. So usually I model this larger than I usually would, and then I scale it down, and we can talk about how to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rotate tool to rotate this so that it's standing up. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna take this shape and I wanna draw this profile first. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll find the central point of an image and then I'll just draw a line out and I'll just kind of trace this profile. So I'm using the line tool until I get about here. And then I tap the A key to use the arc tool like this. And so we're just roughing out this profile, nothing special about what we're doing here. And one thing you wanna be careful of when you're doing this is you wanna make sure that you're drawing on this face so that this is all flat. Otherwise, you're gonna to struggle to get um, you're gonna to struggle to get this to fill in with the face that we need in order to finish this out. But then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw the inside of this like this. And then I'm just gonna use the line tool in order to fill this in so that I have a surface. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I usually try not to delete out any references that I have until after I've uh, tried to create the shape that I wanna create. But what we're gonna do, and again, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna create a copy of this. You don't need to do this. I just do this so that I have this in case I need it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a circle at the base of this object right here. And it doesn't need to be giant. It can just be a smaller circle like this. Um, or you can make it bigger than the circle if you decide that you want to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to find the follow me tool. So we're going to come over here and select the option for follow me. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to select a profile. In this case, I'm going to click on this profile right here. And I'm just going to mouse over top of this circle right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take that profile and it's going to lay it in a circle along this path right here. And then when you're done, you can erase this. And so notice what this has done. And you may want to draw a line across the bottom here just to heal it, but it's created this wine glass shape for us right here. And so now, Let's resize this, right? Because we've drawn this, but it's like four feet high right now. It's too big. Um, if we draw across here, it's actually more like seven feet high. And so that's okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select it and I'm gonna make it a group. And then what I wanna do is I wanna double click in here and I wanna use the tape measure tool to reset the scale. So in this case, I'm gonna use the tape measure tool and I'm just gonna make sure I'm in tape measure mode. I'm actually gonna tap control to turn create guide mode off. And I'm just gonna pick a point on the bottom right here, and then another point on the top right here, and I'm going to click. So once I click, notice how at the bottom, this tells me that I can enter distance to resize model. So what that means is that means I can type in a distance that I want for those points I just measured. So instead of those being seven inches high, I maybe want that to be eight inches high. So I'm just gonna type in a value of eight, and it's gonna ask me if I wanna resize the active group or component, and I'm gonna say, Okay, and so when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna resize this so that this dimension right here is eight inches. So we can draw this larger and then scale it or put it, set it to the correct scale after the fact using the tape measure tool. So now let's do this again with a plate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a file import. We're gonna find an image of a plate. And again, just look for a plate profile image online. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this, bring it in, and I'm gonna stand it up. 
like this. And so in this case, we're gonna do the same thing, right? We're just going to find a point. And we're just gonna trace the profile like this. So make sure that when you're drawing your profiles, you're drawing them flat on the surface. But now I'm just gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna move this over. And I'm actually gonna create two copies of it in this case. So use the move tool in copy mode like this. And this one is actually gonna to have to move over a little more because our plate's actually gonna be pretty big. And so in this case, what I wanna look at is I wanna look at the difference that we get when we have a different number of segments in our circle that we extrude with. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this circle a little bit lower just so my geometry is not intersecting with it. And we'll just draw a circle that's whatever. It doesn't really matter because we're just using the path. But remember in SketchUp that circles have a certain number of segments. They're not true curves, but instead they're made up of segment, segments. And remember that you can adjust those segments by going over into the entity info right here. And so let's say that I was to type in a value of like eight. Well, notice how then this is more of an octagon shape instead of like a circle. I mean, it is a circle in the sense that it goes all the way around, but it has less segments. And let's do the same thing over here, but with a circle that has a lot more segments. So I'm gonna draw a circle over here and we'll say this one has 48 segments. And so what I wanna do is I want to use the follow me tool for both of these. So first off, I'm gonna activate the follow me tool, select my profile, and then we're gonna pick our path and we're just gonna extrude this in a circle like this. And so notice how when we do that, we get this, uh, we get this bowl shape that has eight sides on it like this, right? So this one gives us a completely different style of bowl than what we get over here because the number of segments in our path dictates the way that this is extruded. So over here, remember this has 48 segments. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna click. We're gonna mouse over this face and we're gonna click. And so notice how this one is very smooth over here. So we can use this to create different kinds of shapes based on what we want in here. One thing to be aware of though is while this is much smoother, it also has a lot more geometry in it. So if I was to triple click on this object to select everything in this object, notice how this tells me it has 1800 entities. That's all of the hidden geometry in here that makes up the object. Um, that's everything contained inside of this object. Over here, if we triple click on this one, notice how this one has over 11,000 entities. So this is over 10 times as complex as this shape right here. So while it is smoother, it's also going to be a lot harder for SketchUp to render out. So more isn't always better. Um, a lot of the time what you want to do is you want to find something that looks smooth enough that your shape looks good, but not so smooth that you're creating a ton of extra geometry. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them in the comments down below. So if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure that you do that so that you don't miss the rest of this series. But as always, Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.